How's it going, guys? This is the Tree of Woe Show here with the Elimination Chamber 2014 predictions video. Uh, we got Elimination Chamber tomorrow. We got LeBron James rocking a Bane mask against the Bulls potentially tomorrow. We got Duke versus Syracuse tonight. It's a good weekend for me. Um, anyways, let's jump right into it. Um, let me grab the match list right here. I wrote it all down. Some of these I'm going to be making. I figured that sometimes you just got to make predictions on the fly because some of these I really don't know. And I'm coming off of a perfect Royal Rumble card. Remember that, everybody. Orton, Lesnar, Bray Wyatt, Batista. Coming off a perfect Royal Rumble cards here. So we got the pressure mounting. The pressure is mounting. Um, but anyways, let's get it. Let's just, let's just get the BS out of the way. Let's start with this match. Batista versus Alberto Del Rio. You know, it started on Twitter before Batista returned. Uh, he came back. Del Rio got beat up that day. Del Rio's got beat up every day. So normally you'd be like, well, there's no way you can have a feud 100% dominated by one guy the whole time through. Sort of how, like, Big Show Brock Lesnar worked. Like, Brock Lesnar never went over on the Big Show. So you're like, well, Brock's obviously going to win the pay-per-view. Not here, but he's... I would give Alberto Del Rio... This might literally be the first time I've ever had a match where it's literally 0%. Like, I know I've said I gave CM Punk zero chance to beat The Undertaker, but he probably had 0 0.1. This is zero. This is a wrap. I'm going to write it down right now. J for Batista. Batista's going to win. He's going into main event WrestleMania for the title. He's against a dude like Del Rio who hasn't done anything for how long? I guess he was champion win in, like, October when Cena beat him or whatever it was. So... I don't even need to waste time talking about this match. Batista's going to wreck him. I almost hope this match goes just like uh, Big Show Brock Lesnar did, where it was just beat down and leave. No nonsense. No making Del Rio look strong. Just de just de not, uh, destroy him. Destroy him. Um, then we got the Intercontinental title match. Big E, Mr. Don't Call Me Langston, versus Jack Swagger. And I've heard the things where people have said that maybe Jack Swagger gets the win here um, and then feuds with Cesaro because, you know, it makes sense. They do the split off all of a sudden. But that's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like you would be making Cesaro jealous of Jack Swagger. And it's like, why would he, coming off of the, you know, WWE World Heavyweight Championship elimination year, why would he want to go after the U.S. title? That's my logic, and that's why I'm picking Big E here. I'm still hopeful for a Big E versus Mark Henry, you know what I'm saying, uh, at WrestleMania for the uh, – combine the titles, which would have to have Dean Ambrose lose it, which they've been in the, – the whole Shield's been in a little thing with Mark Henry, mostly Dean Ambrose, so maybe that can happen. But I'm taking Big E here. Um, and then we got uh, the tag team title match, which is the New Age Outlaws. Versus the Usos. Of course I want the Usos to win here. Of course I do. Um, but the thing is, why bring back the New Age Outlaws? Guys from the Attitude Era. Pretty big stars. The crowd still is into them. And just have them win it and then quickly lose it, you know, like a month or so later. I feel like they should build this feud up to WrestleMania and have the Usos win there. I'm not going to be mad if the Usos win at Elimination Chamber. Obviously, I think it would be cooler if it was at WrestleMania. Um, so... I think the New Age Outlaws win here, but it would have to be, maybe not, well, I guess, I guess if it was DQ, the Usos would win. So maybe not DQ, because I'm picking the Outlaws to win eventually, but maybe some sort of cheap distraction type way that the ref, I don't know. Something like that, but either way, I see the Outlaws winning here, but doing so in not so much a clean, dominant fashion, but in a way that the Usos can come back at WrestleMania, get revenge, and win the tag titles. Um... This next match, you might be wondering, why have you not talked about this? Like, you're talking about some of these matches over this. And what are you? You're going completely out of order here. But um, Darren Young versus Titus O'Neil. One of those matches where it's like, okay, the primetime players, they've been together for long enough to where, you know, this feud makes sense. Um, and it's, but, but at the same time, sure, maybe they want to build up Titus O'Neil and all that, but does does this really scream pay-per-view match, or is this just filler? 
I stand by the fact that there is a reason that this match is on the card. Well, let me let me say this. First of all, um, if if it just goes down as a match, if it just goes down as a match that happens and is normal, Titus O'Neil obviously. But what if this is the match? Because it it, it kind of has a random feeling to it. So in my head, I'm thinking, is this the match where Brock this guy Brock Lesnar makes a return, comes out, lays out both of them, and you know goes back to the mode of I want to be the number one contender and you have like, you have to give me that shot and you know, you have to do it. And then that forces, you know, triple H to, he says no or something. And then he does the thing that a lot of people have been talking about. Brock Lesnar beats down Christian takes his spot. I think that's a pretty like, I mean, not pretty likely, but it very well could happen. So this match, I either see Titus O'Neil winning, or this is one where Brock Lesnar comes and lays them both out. It's a no contest proves a point, and then sets up something later, or that's just where we see Brock. Um, then we got the match I am most excited for, unless Brock Lesnar's in the chamber, then they'll be pretty even, I'll be honest. Um, but what am I doing here? Oh, okay, let's see. So the Shield versus the Wyatt family, six-man tag. This feud has been awesome. Everything they're doing on TV has been golden. The last Monday where – you know, you have them in the ring, and, you know, they all they both come out. They have the stare down at the end of the show. They go at each other for just enough time to cut the show and be like, whoa, whoa what's going on? Um, although I wish that this could have, A, either happened at WrestleMania or, B, happened a little earlier on to where they were still both built up, but it wasn't, in my eyes, as obvious as an outcome. Uh, because you can see the cracks in the shield. They're breaking up. You know, Ambrose and Ra Reigns have a thing going. Rollins is kind of the middleman. So it seems to me, I'm picking the Wyatt family. It seems to me like the Wyatt family is going to go over here because the shield is going to get, you know, Ambrose will leave or get distracted. Or um, I could see, I could see sort of like think back to WrestleMania 29, that opening six man match actually against the shield where Orton tagged himself in off Big Show and then went in there and got knocked out and then Big Show didn't help him. I could totally see that. Or Rollins is knocked out. Ambrose tags himself in off Reigns, gets beat up by, like, hit, gets hit with his sister Abigail and then Roman Reigns just doesn't help him. I could totally see that happening as well. Something like that. But either way, I'm really excited for this match. It'll be awesome to see. Um, and I am picking the Wyatt family. So it's going to be a good time. Can't wait for that. Now we get to the six-person elimination chamber match. Woo! We got, we got scenarios for days here. So obviously, like I already touched on, um, you could have the angle where Brock Lesnar in his hometown of Minneapolis, I'm praying for this, guys. I am praying for this. Takes out Christian, um, takes him out, empty spot in the chamber, has to get filled. Brock Lesnar fills it. Goes on, wins the elimination chamber, faces Batista. That's me. That's what I want right now. Um, but if that doesn't happen and this is just a straight up match, I can see Christian getting eliminated first, then Sheamus, then S oh man, Cena and Cesaro is a tricky one because I think John Cena is going to get eliminated by some Wyatt distraction. Or some Undertaker distraction if you want to make me a perfect world. But probably a Wyatt family distraction. So maybe he goes out earlier, like third, and then Cesaro, and then it's down to Orton Bryan and Orton wins. So if it's just if it just goes as a normal match, which would be okay, like the problem with coming up with all these crazy scenarios is you get unrealistic expectations in your head, and then if it doesn't happen, you're mad, even if it's okay. So I'm not gonna like because Brock Lesnar coming in there. It's not impossible. It's not likely. So I can't sit here and say, oh, well, a la how I would be hypocritical about the Royal Rumble because I want Brock in there, um, even though it's not likely he's going to be in there, just like it was unlikely Daniel Bryan was going to be in the Rumble. And then if I complain after, I'll look like an idiot because I'm talking about it. So I'm not setting the – I'm just saying if that happened. Whew. So like I said, if it goes down as just a normal Lemay's Chamber match, I think Orton retains goes on to face Batista, which – even I'm, you guys, I don't have to say, but even I'm not, you know, the biggest 
proponent of that. It's like it's a match we've seen in the past, and it, to my knowledge, didn't go over very well. I wasn't watching live at the time, but I heard it didn't go over too hot. But here's – listen. This is where the screw's loose. We're out the door. The likelihood of this happening is not high, but it popped in my head the other day, and I just said, you know what? I would never be happier in my entire life. Picture this scenario. Brock Lesnar doesn't, he doesn't, not, he's not in. I feel like if he gets in there, he has to win. So for this scenario to happen, he obviously isn't in the chamber. Christian's still in there. Christian gets eliminated. All these dudes get eliminated. It's down to Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, and they go at it for 10 minutes or so, just by themselves. Brutal match. All of a sudden, Randy Orton goes for an RKO. Gets spun out of it, running knee, one, two, three. Daniel Bryan is the champion. Chamber lifts. Everybody's having a good time. Daniel Bryan is just, you know, the crowd loves it, obviously. Daniel Bryan's finally the champion. All of a sudden, Triple H sends out the real number one contender, Brock Lesnar. You have to face him right now. Brock Lesnar beats Daniel Bryan. Becomes champion and goes on to WrestleMania. Oh my God, guys! Or just or 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 just have Brock Lesnar face Daniel Bryan on Raw the next night and have Brock Lesnar win. But by God, I'd have the best time ever. Oh man, L likely not at all. Incredible for me. <laughs> yeah. Um. So those are my scenarios. Like I said. So like. I, so just remember, if any of these crazy scenarios happen, you uh, I'm gonna be happy. But if, like I said, you can't get your hopes too high. So if this show just goes no crazy swerves, I'm going Batista over Del Rio, the Wyatts over the Shield, Outlaws over Usos, Titus over Darren, Big E over Swagger, and Orton to win the chamber. But if any of those crazy things happens, like I said, you're going to see a happy dude on the review. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Leave your predictions down below. I want to know how you guys think these matches are going to go. What do you think of my crazy scenarios? Do you have your own? Um, anything you want to leave, subscribe and like this video. We'll see you tomorrow for the review of Elimination Chamber.